on him. I had to keep somebody around me to keep my, my mind off of that. I didn't go to the Lord and pray. I fell asleep. My prayer life was a slap asleep inside me. And you know something the other way is in the Word. Listening and taking heed to what God said. Jesus just told them. He said, pray that you don't enter into temptation. Then he turned around and went to sleep. He didn't pray. He didn't listen to Christ. He cared less about what Christ had to say. Because it didn't bother him enough to keep him awake. Oh, Peter made it there. I believe old Peter was walking around patting himself on the back a little bit. I mean, I will tell you, Peter was a great man of God. We've seen it on the day of Pentecost. But he was a great man of God that walked around and patted himself on the shoulder a little bit. He said, look at me, look what I've done. He done come to the place that he didn't think he needed to pray, he could take him a nap. He done came to the place that he didn't have to listen to what the master said. He knew better. We don't have to listen to the message that comes from the pulpit. We know more than that preacher does. We know more than what he's got to say. We know more about the, what the things of God than he does. What's got wrong today is, my friends, the same thing it was in the day that Peter with the church is asleep when it comes to the things of God. And if you're right with God tonight, listen, don't you go to sleep on God. You better stay awake and keep both eyes open. Because I'm going to tell you the prince of, of, of this old world, he's doing everything to carry you down. He wants to make a mockery of you. He wants to ridicule you. He wants people to look at you and say, God, huh? First thing that happens in a Christian's life is they don't fire for God. They quit spending time with God. They quit listening to God's Word. They quit talking to God. And then all them three comes at one time. You've got to pray. You've got to talk to God. And you've got to listen to God to fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, you I got a boy back there on the back row back yonder. He weighs over 300 pounds. He's my son. I'm his father. He goes to argue with me. Our fellowship's over with. Our fellowship's over with. You can't fellowship with somebody arguing with you. And what do we do with God? We are but God. But God. But, but God. God, you don't know. You know the stupidest thing we never tell God? You don't understand God. You just don't understand, God. How many times have you, your kids ever said that? Mama, Dad, you just don't understand. How many times have we said that to God? God, you just don't understand. Yes, He does understand. He understands, and there's no need a button, God. Just do it. We can't fellowship unless we listen to Him. We can't fellowship with Him arguing with Him. Then go on, look at verse 54. You know what's happened here? Judas is king. He's portrayed him. He's done put the kiss of death upon Christ's cheek. Boy, ain't that something? Ain't that something? He didn't point him out and kiss him. Another message right there. Buddy, I mean, he kissed him. Loved him all the way to death. Loved him all the way to the cross. The devil loved every minute of him when he was going to the cross. Loved every bit of it done to verse 54. Look what happened here. They, they, they began the, the night whenever they was fixing to carry my friends and fixing to have the trials and all this for the Lord. Here they came and it says right here verse 54, then they took him and they laid him and brought him into the high priest's house and Peter followed afar off. Look! That same night just a few moments ago he was there drawing his sword willing to die for him. <coughs> Willing to die for him. Now here, here he is. Dumb started falling afar off. He's not no more up there by his Savior's side. He's not no more up there ready to go to battle with him. He's not up there on the front lines ready to fight, ready to pray, ready to preach, ready to, to, to read, ready to do everything. What God knows. But he's done backed off and followed him a little ways behind him. Oh, he's still got his eyes on him. He's still got his eyes on Christ. But yet though he's following him and not quite doing it. 
what he used to do. You know, there's a lot of used tours in the church today. They used to do this. They used to do that. See, I used to be a used to. <laughs> I was a used to for, for, for about, what, did you, seven, eight years? I was a used to. I used to pastor. I used to preach. I used to teach Sunday school. I used to do stuff. Yes. But I didn't do them no more. Didn't do them no more. And you know, I didn't wake up one night and say, you know something other? I'm just going to backslide and just get out of God's way. That didn't happen to me. And it ain't going to happen to you. You're going to start following him a little bit further off than what you used to. You ain't going to be quite as close to him as you used to be. You ain't going to love the fellowship quite as much as you used to love. You're not going to love the same the specials like you used to. You ain't going to love, you ain't going to have that feeling like you used to have when you come to the house of God. You ain't going to sit back there and say, preach it, brother Patrick. Preach it, preach it, preach it. Bring it to us. It don't matter how hot it gets. Bring it to us. It don't matter how many toes it steps on. Bring it to us. You ain't going to want that. And you'll come to the place that oh it burns man. You see me preaching, you see me head on the pulpit most of the time there's somebody nodding. If you see me walk down the aisles towards the back, there's somebody text messaging. <laughs> Because when we come in the house of God, we I expect if I'm going to pray and study to get a message, and I'm going to bring what God lays upon my heart, you do what God expects out of you to listen. Amen. Preaching a revival one time across the river, two locked up on the back pew. I mean, locked up, brother Pat. I'm talking about lit lock. A lit lock. <laughs> I, I turned my back to him all the way. I said, now look, I'm not looking at you. But when I turn back, if that's still going on, I will find your mama, I will find your daddy. If i got to go to their house, this will not go on in the house of God. Mm. And when I turn back around, they were gone. That was there. <laughs> but that's fine. Yeah. That spirit we don't need in the church. Yeah. But see, what will happen is, is you'll come and you'll start clipping your fingernails instead of listening to the message. You'll start looking at your watch instead of listening to me. It'll be more important to leave than come. It'll be more important. You, you know something? Else? There's a movie, The Titanic. Mm -hmm. Debbie bought that thing. One night, me and her was going to sit down and watch it. And she broke that sucker out in what is on three different reels. Two. Two? Well, on two or three. I said, that ain't no way I'm sitting there at all. I ain't watched the Titanic yet, Kurt. It ain't that important to me. But I tell you what, you let God get in a service, I don't care. It's been 3.30 when we left the church, hadn't it, Brother Kevin? Yes, sir. Service was still going on, wasn't it? Just because the preacher got tired and hushed, that don't mean God ain't still going. <laughs> so we used to at Brownsdale Baptist Church, we used to have tag preaching. You ever had that? Oh, uh, here? Yes, sir. But what we do is we put the piano players and say, okay, you got 15 minutes, she'd hit the dog in 15 minutes. If that other preacher didn't take it away from him, he gave up his time. Yeah. He had to get out of the pew to get up and take it away from him and start preaching. Then his 15 minutes up, hit it again. I mean, I love it. This would go on for 